Hey there, in the previous video on capoing, we capoed at the third fret and I showed you the chords by their real names at the third fret. And I kind of implied that I was going to be going up the neck, but actually we're going to go backwards. Uh, mainly because what I want to do is I want to knock off the keys in the circle of fifths that are before, that are before C, so the flat keys. Um, those are the ones we want to get rid of first as far as having to play them in open position. This, this allows us to kind of uh, uh, play them in a much more friendly way and a better sounding way to be honest. Um, you, sh you still should know how to play these chords without a capo ultimately, but in the short term and in writing and performing and often you're going to find that capoing is going to be the best way to get the best sound out of bad keys. Um, and so the two keys before C in the circle of fifths were F and B flat. F had one flat and B flat has two flats. Well the next two keys are E flat which has three flats and A flat which has four flats. And so what we're going to do to, to, to uh, play those keys using our friendly shapes in the key of D and G, um, we're going to capo at the first fret. So we're going to go backwards a little bit. But you're going to learn the names of the chords here in the first fret. Now I can, I can give you a shorthand uh, but it's not going to ultimately apply to the flat keys. But the shorthand is Whatever chord you play capoed at the first fret is that chord with a sharp after it. So this is C sharp, this is D sharp, this is E sharp, this is G sharp, and this is A sharp. Okay? But none of those are the more common terms. Normally we would refer to C sharp. Well, C sharp could be equally commonly referred to as D flat. So that one is probably 50-50. Uh, but very rarely do I ever see D sharp on a chart. It's usually we're gonna if you're gonna have a D sharp, it's probably gonna be an E flat. Uh, same with G sharp. G sharp is pretty rare, so it's gonna be A flat. So the enharmonic—that's the word you need. To, the word for the day is enharmonic. Okay, that's two different names for the same note. For example, this is uh, this is a D sharp chord. It's an E flat chord. Both the same same chord, different name. So they're enharmonic. Okay, the first chords we're gonna knock off are the ones in E flat, which is the uh, three flat key, uh, just uh, three, three keys away from C. And this is E flat, looks like a D shape, but it's E flat. This is the one chord. The two chord is F minor, and it looks like an E minor shape. The four chord is A flat, and it looks like G. The five chord is B flat, and it, that's basically an A shape. It is an A shape, but it's a B flat with the capo. And you'll notice that I'm using these three fingers instead of these three fingers. For me, my fingers are a little bit bigger, so that it's a little tough to get them all in there. If I substitute my pinky for my ring finger here, I, it requires less real estate. I've seen some players do this, where they actually put their first finger in the middle. Um, and a lot of flamenco players do that for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I've seen a lot of flamenco players play that way. Okay, uh, a little sidebar. And then the sixth chord in the key of E flat is C minor, and we can play that by using a B minor shape. And the great thing about using the capo also is that, and I mentioned it before in the other video, is that the strings are at fret height, so they're a little bit lower uh, than they would be at, cape, at, at nut height, so they're, it's actually easier to bar. Okay, so for review, one chord is E flat, two, F minor, four chord is A flat, the five chord is B flat, and the sixth chord is C minor. And that will get you through a lot of songs in the key B flat, okay? And that's not very much to ask you to memorize. You already know the shape, so your fingers will know, know it already. You just gotta memorize the new names. So that when you get a chart in E flat and it says B flat, you just immediately go there, and it says A flat, you go here, and it goes F minor, you go here. You just you will start to be able to read charts in other keys without having to transpose them. Okay, now let's knock off the chords in the key of A flat, which is the four flat key. Okay, so A flat's the one we've already we've already had that one. A flat's the one chord. It's a G shape. The A minor shape becomes B flat. That's the two chord in the key of A flat. C shape is the four chord, which is D flat. This is a D flat chord. And back to the E flat chord, which you already know. And the F minor chord, which you already know. So in review, the chords in the key of A flat, uh, five main chords in the key of A flat, A flat, B 
flat minor, D flat, E flat, and F minor. Okay, some other chords you might uh, want to run into, you might run into F. That's not unusual to, see, to get an F chord if you're playing in capo first position. Um, let's see, we had, um, you could do E flat, E flat seven. You have A flat, A flat seven, B flat, B flat seven. All of those chords are very, very likely. Um, let's see. E flat minor. Okay, and here's a bonus chord. <laughs> That's, I'm not, so I'm muting the, the uh, fifth string. Um, and this would be A flat minor six. I love this chord. Okay, so I'm doing is uh, taking that G shape, take off my first finger, deaden that string, and bring the third and fourth finger up one string and leave that string open on top, and we get a A flat minor six. You probably won't get asked to play that one very often, but <laughs> it's your bonus chord. Okay, so I hope that helps and it gets you kind of familiar with the, the chords in the first position and start to learn the names of chords and what you're actually playing because again the main thing is that if you know what you're playing um, the actual names of the chords you're playing it makes it a lot easier just to have a chart thrown in front of you and go oh okay you know A flat no problem rather than go okay now A flat is okay if I play G with the capo you don't have to think that if you know it which is great. It's a, not that much information to learn. I mean, I've only shown you a few chords. Just memorize those. And again, the s prefixes may change, but the suffixes say, stay the same. So all that knowledge you have in open position on all those chords, all those suffixes, all those added, you know, the sevenths and the suspendeds and all those things, they all transfer up and down the neck, okay? I hope this helps. God bless you. I'll be doing more of these videos. I got more videos coming. Thank you for subscribing. It's amazing to me. And thank you for promoting my videos on forums and all that. That's how I get new uh, subscribers often and new viewers. And I really appreciate it. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section, uh, especially if you have an idea of a video you'd like me to do. Uh, I don't do specific song videos, but uh, I do like to have ideas that I probably haven't thought of teaching about. So you, you might be able to provide me some of those. Okay, take care. God bless.